chosen to test this station's destructive power on your home planet of Orton. What? Then name the system Orton. Well, key religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good flash. Sparks are coming up on Alderaan. You may fire when ready. One of the Alderaan Explosion Explosion Network's official countdown to Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. It's 22 days until release. My name is Don White, your Jedi Master, and joining me... My partner ones, Ashley Hobley. Hey, John, excited to be here on the home stretch. On the home stretch, indeed. And Kieran Marchant. I thought we weren't going to watch A New Hope again. I thought we were supposed to watch one of the new. Wow. Games. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sometimes I don't know. Sometimes, it, nearly every episode, one of you is coming with a hot take, and I don't know if you actually believe it or you're just saying it to fucking fuel foot flames. <laughs> uh, we'll leave that up to the audience. Uh, is judgment? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we'll be able to tell if you don't like the movie or not in, a, in just a short second. Um, yeah, so this week we are going to be discussing the fork, of, fork, Jesus Christ, the Force Awakens. Even as we hit the final countdown, um, we are officially in sequel tri- trilogy territory now. Uh, so let's jump straight into it. Ash, when was the last time you watched this movie, and how did you feel about it with this most recent rewatch? I would assume the last time I watched it was before going to see the last Jedi like last time we did this obviously um Mm -hmm. i still enjoy it i I think it's a good movie it's a fun blockbuster like popcorn movie um i think i noticed i think i noticed this time more than the last times it's very cartoony like their reactions and that kind of stuff and just just it just feels very kiddy or like maybe of the same tone as like the animated stuff like just the constantly holding hands and running around and they're just people's reactions to different things um yeah it's i enjoy it i think it is better than a new hope so uh, i mean if you're going to remake something at least do it better so they did that and and it was our first look at all these cool characters so what more could you want okay um so the last time i watched this i think was like literally just before the i went to see the last jedi for the first time because i think i watched it and then left to go to the movies to go watch last jedi um I do still enjoy this movie. I think watching it, there's almost something about it where it it almost seems like they try too hard at setting everything up for this new trilogy. Like it, it almost seems forced with sometimes with what they've done to like set up new characters or the whole section with Han Solo and Chewie seems a little bit overdone sometimes. It, it but I enjoy it. It's just I think I don't know. I don't, don't think that quite that level of. It's Star Wars, but his new stuff was really met correctly. Hmm. Um, I think I watched it last year when I was down at my um, pop's place because it was on uh, <coughs> it was on Oz Star. And once do we again, just need to like to- copy and paste that answer for like everyone? <laughs> yeah, well, because uh, everyone else is always talking, and I'm the one who feel like flicks through and finds something. And I'm always just like, oh, Star Wars is on. I'll watch it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. I uh, I would say that watching it this time felt different to last time because, like, uh, similarly to, I guess, watching Jedi, it's like, oh, I'm feeling feeling different about this because we're approaching the end of the, the movies now. And watching this one this time is like, oh, we're approaching the end of this trilogy now. So I, I guess, like, it, it felt sort of like I'm actually watching the first chapter of something where I know I'm about to watch the, the final chapter kind of around the corner, which I didn't have for The Last Jedi. I was like, okay. And also feel like somewhat know these characters. That was the other thing I was thinking about while watching. I'm like, I I really feel like I know these characters a lot better now, even more so, um, obviously a lot more since The Last Jedi came out. Because it's like bet- between The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, there really wasn't much, if any at all, expanded universe material to help like flesh out these characters. So it was like the only thing we knew about any of these characters really was what we knew from this movie and then was heading to the last Jedi like okay teach us more but we now have two movies plus like and um, uh, like characters like Poe Dameron who's had an entire comic book run come and fi- uh, close and finish um there are now novels out featuring these characters and blah 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 so th- this time I'm watching this I'm like oh I, f- I really feel like he's a not only do the actors look a lot younger in this than like watching trailers for 
uh, rise, I feel like they, they generally look younger, but then also I, I feel like I'm looking at the characters like, you are so naive and young at this point. Little do you know the <laughs> fucked up shit you're about to go through. So, yeah, I, I feel like I was kind of watching it through a, uh, that sort of perspective because we're about to go into the last chapter, but I still enjoy it. Um, my The things I dislike are the same things I dislike since day one, basically, and the things I like are still the same things I like. Um yeah, it's, it's, it's still fun. And I, if anything, when it finished, I was like, cool, I'm excited to watch The Last Jedi. <laughs> like, <laughs> like let, let, let's let's get, in, uh, get into over to that one. The Dark Side. And the Light. jump into the notes I write down, of course, and then use any of these notes that I have as jumping off points for hot takes, I guess. Um, <laughs> the first thing I wrote down was the opening of this movie was so much to take in in 2015. And now I'm like, yes, I understand everything. I, I remember one of the, I remember not sitting in the cinema when that opening crawl was coming through. And I remember just like feeling my, my eyes, like scan every word with like utmost detail. Because we we knew literally nothing about like the Star Wars universe coming into the Force Awakens and like what was going to be happening, and I remember heading into the movie theater, I'm like, oh my god, I was legit so excited for the crawl because I knew the crawl was going to set up and explain like what what's happening because we knew there was people called the First Order and resist, you know, there was a resistance and all this stuff, but they tease this stuff in trailers and like JJ and interviews and stuff, but coming into the movie, it's like, what does any of this mean? And then I remember like the crawl just starting with that first sentence. It's like Luke Skywalker has disappeared. You're like, what? Like, <laughs> how could he, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. And it's like rewatching it now. I'm like, this is all sort of simple, but it, it did make me wish and wish of one thing. And I, I think I've brought this up before. I, can, I honestly can't remember. And th is that, the opening crawl of this movie, and also this movie in general, ignores politics like the fucking plague, and I think it's a disservice to the movie. Because I, I, I honestly feel like if the opening crawl or at some point characters in this movie had explained like the politics of the movie and what, what's happening in the world when it comes to like how, how the new republic is working, uh, what the what exactly the resistance is, um, all these sorts of things, then it would have possibly, I think it actually would have enhanced the movie. And I think the only reason they stay away from actually explaining how the government is working in the current Star Wars universe is because they were afraid of people like thinking about the prequels watching this. Yeah, thinking about Phantom and... Um Attack of the Clones, because, yeah, there is a lot of politics in those, but I don't think, I still don't think those did politics in the right way. I still think there's a right way to do the politics for this universe and for these movies. Um, it just takes the right person to come along and write it. I think it almost feels like they're ignoring part of Leia's character by doing it as well. Like Yeah, by ignoring it, because her character's tied directly to politics, so... Yeah, so it just kind of ignores what she's actually, like, half of her character, so it just makes her really this resistance leader. It doesn't make her this politician, so it's... It's, 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 it's a strange admission. I understand why they did it. It just makes it a little strange for Leia. I think that's why what? you've got the, the expanded universe, like the books and the comics and everything that you can delve into that more if someone wants to write about it, potentially. Because well, I, you've got two and a half hours to tell a story. Yeah. Do you really want to be bogged down in the politics no, but of the world? I think, I think one more paragraph, even in the opening crawl, explaining, or just like an extra little bit, because where it says like Leia fights as a resistance against the, the, the First Order that's rose from the ashes of the Empire, whatever it says. It's like people to this day... I still see in comment sections not understanding what the resistance is, which is because of this movie and it's failure to actually explain what the resistance is, if it's actually an offshoot of the New Republic, what they were allowed to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that was what needed to be explained in this movie. You didn't need to go hardcore into politics and who's in charge, but just explaining the simple fact that the resistance is actually, at the time of this movie, semi-sanctioned by the new republic but is supposed to kind of just i think not start the, fights the word the, the fact that the word resistance is used is is kind of weird is like they're an, they're a neef uh, uh they're a neefter basically 
Yeah, like it's not. <laughs> they're not really rebels, or they're not really a resistance anymore. So, in in this movie, they are a resistance. It makes sense the wording in the in the new movie. It would make more sense for, to call them like rebels, I guess. Yeah. Fair. Well, because they're, because they're still they're still part of the government, and so they're an offshoot of the New Republic, and they're resisting against the troublesome First Order. That's coming. I don't know. When, when I think of the word resistance, though, I think of uh, like a smaller, unpowered, undermanned unit that is resisting a controlling group. Whereas I don't see the First Order as a controlling group. I just see them. I guess, as, but like, like a, calling them rebels wouldn't have made sense either because it's like they're part of the government. No, at this but point. like it would have been. I don't know. Could they could have been something from like more directly related to the New Republic? New Republic Police Force. Now that would have been shit to write on posters. <laughs> it would have been shit to write on posters, but they could have found something that made them represent the New Republic directly. I don't think... I, I find it really weird that they're still kind of like, oh, the New Republic doesn't really want to directly oppose the First Order, blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, why why not? Like, It's it's basically in the in the books and stuff, they, it's, they explain it as like... So the First Order starts creeping in as this like semi government like kind of like coming in and be like hey we've got money we're gonna come in here we're gonna like do these things we're gonna offer jobs and do all this sort of stuff so they're they're front facing in at the time of this movie and shortly before obviously before the force awakens takes place the first order is like front facing as a good people however leia and other people have seen and got evidence that they are actually off in the galaxy doing bad shit however at the time when she starts the resistance when she gets permission to start the resistance kind of in secret to new republic and that's because the new republic doesn't want to openly uh fa- face off against the first order because it would have been bad for politics re- like political reasons which is why <laughs> is what it boils down to it, but we don't ever get to see that no. public facing look of the first order we only ever see the behind the scenes. So it doesn't establish that at all in this movie. No, or the public facing face of the New Republic. In, no. Like, so we don't see that. And so that isn't established. So we just see the First Order as out and out bad guys who yes. are doing terrible things. And you're like, why the fuck aren't the New Republic doing stuff? Like, why aren't yeah. you moving against this with more force? Like, what's what's the go here? And I think going back to your politics comment is if they showed that somehow, even if it's in a scene where Leia and a representative of the New Order are interacting in a New Republic setting, hmm. where it's like people are being nice to the New Rep- to the well, First Order and everything. Think think about this scene. So after she's after they've all been rescued from Taconda and they've gone back to the their base with Han and everyone there, you have a, a quick sh- scene, like literally thirty seconds or so. Uh, of Leia speaking to someone from the New Republic, like hologram or something, and you hear her saying, the First Order has openly attacked us, blah, 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 blah. We need to strike back now and gather forces. And then you hear the other person be like, no, we we can't because of this, this, this. And then Leia like gets all pissy. Like a little scene like that would have just, expl- like I feel like without going into big detail, would have still told the audience like, this is the way it's working at the moment. She's tried to fight back against them. The New Republic doesn't believe they're actually what they are. Because one of my favorite scenes in the movie still, every time I watch it, is the slight detail that uh, when Poe gets captured at the start of the movie and he walks into that, dest- where he walks into that destroy. Just the way he like he's looking around because he's like, oh my fuck. Because at that point, he's he knows the First Order is supposed to be like semi-small and whatever else. But now he's on this massive ship where they've got like all these TIE fighters and people everywhere. And as soon as he steps off, he's looking around like, what the fuck? Like this is way more than... I was expecting kind of thing, you know, because way yeah. bigger than he thought they were. Anyway, uh, politics. politics. Uh, Come to Disney Plus <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I, I just, I do believe like the more, the more you get interested in Star Wars, the more it's like the politics obviously become important information for how the, the world works, you know, what's happening. Um, next thing I wrote down was sad BB-8 beeps with a sad face which is simply after Poe. It's like, you got to leave now, buddy. Got to go over there and go. And then people are like, oh. and then um, the thing blows up and then uh, poor, poor set BB-8. So they crazy. do such a good job of making BB-8 a lovable character. 
a, a, like, emote actual emotions. Kind so of emote emotions, <laughs> and I think I remember when I first watched the trailer for Force Awakens, being like, "Oh, they're just trying to replace R two D two. They're just trying to give us a replacement for R two D two." And then watching it, it doesn't feel like that. Like it, it feels like he's an established and fully fulfilled character. So. Yeah. Well, R2-D2, R2-D2, as we talked about the Return of the Jedi, is a sarcastic little motherfucker, and bb is kind of like a fun-loving kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They don't feel the same. Like, for, for droids, their personalities do feel unique. Um, You're saying BB-8 is this movie's Anakin Skywalker from Phantom Menace? Yeah, he hates sand as well, so. Hates sand. Yippee. He likes yeah. saying this is, <laughs> Yippee! This is pod racing. Yippee! <laughs> Can I cut in with a thought here? Uh, yeah, so you're obviously the film starts with Finn and uh, Law Santeca talking. Yeah. Do you yeah. reckon he was originally conceived to be played by George Lucas? Law Santeca? Yeah. Nah, because I'm pretty sure him and JJ have a past or something, don't they? No, but just the dialogue he says, this will begin to make things right. I've traveled too far and seen oh. too much <laughs> to ignore the despair of the galaxy. <laughs> Without the Jedi, there could be no balance in the Force. In my mind, JJ wrote that with like maybe George Lucas would want to do I that. Think, I think and you're then, reading between the and lines. And then they and pitched it, it and George is like, I hate all of this. He's like, oh, I'll get somebody else. <laughs> this should begin to make things right. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cannot I can I can I can see what you're saying, but I don't think that would have been. There's no way George would have ever done that. Okay. I know. It no. could have been like a Skyfall situation. Yeah, I think it was. It was just re- like it's just very MacGuffin-y. You know, the movie starts. It's like we need to get the we need to set up what's happening. It's like this is beginning to make things right. Here's a fucking map. Blah blah blah. Jedi Force. Blah blah. But you wink. know, like it's just yeah. He's, but wink. <laughs> 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 I don't know because uh, I suppose if you believe that and J J Day's writing this will begin to make things right, then you believe that J J hates the prequels. <laughs> I guess. Like, do we believe that J J hates the prequels? No, I think it. He just uh, thinks that Star Wars changed after the prequels. I, guess. I think he, he believes there was mistakes made by that trilogy. Hmm. I mean, if they made if they made that character George Lucas, they would have had to have that because Los Anteca shows up in the Poe the po Dameron comic a few times. So then they would have had to draw George Lucas <laughs> as a character. <laughs> in the comic, which would have been, um, he could have just been wearing a helmet every time they, you know, you saw him in the comic. Yeah, yeah. No, he could just be younger. <laughs> yeah, no, because it's set. The Poe Demer, the first run uh, of the comic, yeah. like leads directly up to the start. You got of that the emperor treatment. Yeah, Face completely yeah, changed. Yeah. Uh, next thing I wrote down was can't believe they was going to kill Poe originally. What the fuck? Which is a thought I have literally every time I watch the movie. Where I'm just like, I can't believe that they were originally going to get rid of him. What what a world we would live in if they got rid of Oscar Isaac in the Star Wars universe. Crazy. Just you'd miss his sass. Like between him us telling uh, Kylo Ren, he can't understand what he's saying, and like yeah. he's a. Uh, you you talk first. I talk first. I can't I can't really understand you. With all back the- back talk to a. <laughs> Uh, what's his face? General Hux in the next movie. Yeah, yeah. You miss all that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Poe's like one of my the favorite. He, could, I think he was my favorite. Uh, like when I walked out of the cinema because like Ray's still confusing. You know, like and Finn is like they're both like kind of enigma characters. Whereas Poe was the easiest I think to grab onto. You're like he's resistance, resistance fire fighter, flies next wing. You know, work, works with Leia. I, I feel like he was the easiest to kind of understand like where he comes from what he what his story is whereas ray's like mystery box finn's like mystery box, mystery box like you know yeah. so there's a reason why he's the only one with the comic book series yeah because <laughs> he yeah. actually has a past that you can explore yeah can i also say this scene immediately established kylo ren is an actual threat because watching the trailers i only ever thought ah, oh, this is just once again, this is just their attempt at replacing Darth Vader. This is just their crappy attempt at making another character, whatever. But just the simple thing of him stopping a laser with the Force was so fucking cool yeah, that I, I was inst- instantly in like, cinema, holy shit. And a pop in the audience when that happened. Like, just to have, and just the effect of that laser just staying in the air until he released it was, 
It was just so fucking cool. It, like instantly, the Force was cool again because the Force, you know, it's a bit shit sometimes, and it was it was instantly more interesting. Yeah, I I feel like if you watched all the trailers, it was easy to be like, oh, dude in a mask, Vader rip off. But then as soon as you get into the movie, he's like it, the way he talks, everything he does, and then when you find out he's just a spoiled little brat and he's spitting it, it's like he's nothing like Vader. Yeah. I, I, like it was very easy to see that he looked. To get that, I guess, coming in, but um next thing I wrote down was it's realistic really. You have this massive boat battle over Jakku and thirty years later there's still X Wings of Fighters and Destroyers all there. Cause I, I, I love that there's like it's the first time that the Star Wars universe shows a planet where like a massive battle's happened over it and like what like what would happen? Like how long would those Ships all sit there and, you know, whatever else. And it's like, you've still got all these ships just everywhere. No pun intended, but it really does show the aftermath of the whole situation. It certainly does. It certainly does. That's a, it's a pun because the Battle of Jakku is from the Aftermath book series. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God, um, also, it's in Battlefront 2's campaign. If you'd like to play through the fight of Jakku, you pay one of the last the last levels of that game. Spoilers go over the Battle of Jakku. Uh, math, massive defining moment actually is considered the last battle, not not the Battle of Endor. Really, the Battle of Jakku is the the final battle before the Empire was kind of fully pushed away. Uh, the moment of Rey with the helmet is still great. Coming into the last film, she's this girl that has been whipped up into this mess that she didn't see coming, and all she was was dreaming of exploring the stars. Was she it, though? It kind of. Well, she, she, I, I love the moment because it just shows her just being like she puts the helmet on it, and you see like she gives that little, uh, sl- like that little smile, like she's like, just like kind of daydreaming guess, about. I guess she wanted to. Well, it's it. She's constantly talking about waiting for a family. Whatever. Well, she, she wants. She she, she wants, wants to leave. She's the planet staying with her family. on the planet. She wants. Yes, she's staying on the planet, waiting for her family. But at the same time, she has dreams of. She's imagining. Stars. She's imagining what her life could have been, like what if she'd never been left on this planet. What life could have been like? Um, she's not going to spend all her free time teaching herself how to fly if she's not like dreaming of being a pilot one day. You know. Yeah. Like, the only reason she stays on that planet is literally just because she thinks she has to stay there to um, see her parents return. Yeah. It's crazy to see uh, Daisy Ridley so young though. It's like. I think she's aged up a little bit since just being a I fresh face. I think all aged up. Yeah. Legit, everyone in this movie looks way younger to me. That was one thing I was thinking this time watching it, not when I was watching yeah. The Last Jedi. And I think that's just because of all the recent trailers. They look a lot older. Not like t- 20 years older, but they definitely look no. like y- uh, young teenagers or something here. Even um, Oscar Isaac looks so much younger in this. I guess it's because the new one, like he has more facial. Uh, he's got like a little gruff beard happening. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only what? Five, six years, maybe. But yeah, yeah, five years. But it's it's funny because he looks so. He, even he looks young here, but then he like did um, X Mark and her at the same time. And it's like he looks older and that. So yeah, yeah makeup. To, uh makeup. Yeah. Wonder Visual if face. we could see more. Wonder if we could see more stormtroopers switch tire sides and return. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Finn certainly sets up if they could. And in the book I'm reading at the moment, which is Rise of the Resistance, um, they play with the idea that not all First Order members, while uh, were understanding of what was happening because in the book I'm reading at the moment they're playing around with the idea of like uh, first order, first order, not soldiers, not stormtroopers or anything, but like more um, people that are working on planets uh, and like doing jobs as like part of the first order or whatever. That they, they hear about like things that happen, like they're destroying planets, but they're like that was that that, no, that, know, that was right. just some crazy people. Like that's not the actual what the first order is about, you know. So and like obviously with. Finn, they set up the idea that it is possible for uh, stormtroopers to step aside, and we have spent a bunch of time kind of wondering what the final battle and what's going to happen in the last movie. You know, is it is it one v three? You know, like is it everyone turning against the emperor? Like, what's going to happen? So I'm like, eh. like maybe if the last battle comes down to it, and there's a bunch of Sith troopers coming out of the emperor and whatever else, you might see some other stormtroopers switch sides. I guess if that's the way things go, I don't, I don't know. It's something yeah i think it would also retroactively make finn a better character like he wouldn't come off as a snowflake character so much that 
you know, he wasn't one of a kind. There has there are other people that leave the order and, and move on to become resistance fighters. It was just a matter of Finn was in the right place at the right time when he made his de- defection um, compared to them. I think that would... Because surely in a world where the First Order, like Stormtroopers are no longer clones and it's outside the Empire, what... Like, there has to be more defectors and more people that can that would step away from that world. Yeah, you'd think so. And it's like, maybe in the last movie they could, you know... They, they they explain what's actually happening and then maybe it turns off the people. Maybe then Finn could even lead them, you know, be the example. It would give it would give Finn a more uh, substantial role to play because I think even in this, when we when we were going into Force Awakens, I think we all thought Finn was going to play a more stronger role and that hasn't really transpired through the two movies. Um, I think Finn in many ways has been fairly lost. Like, I don't think the whole Canto Blight arc helped his character too much. Um, him being an idiot at the end of Last Jedi was a bit eh. Um, I just, yeah, I think this could fulfill his character a lot more and give him something more substantial to do. Um, I think, like... I I guess his his arc is in this movie he wants to run. And then in Last Jedi he still wants to run. <laughs> yeah, that well, was that felt really weird for me that the Last Jedi Finn had a, there was no show of progression since the start of Force Awakens. For I Finn. think it may I, I, we can well, talk more to about be it fair, when we get to that. The Last Jedi takes place like barely any time after. The yeah, that's Jedi. what I was about to say. Like we we can we can go over it a bit more when we watch that one. But you got to remember that Last Jedi literally takes place after this movie. But and F- Finn never agrees to join the Resistance. The only reason he goes to Starkiller Base is to rescue Rey. Uh, in fact, he gave zero shits about the actual plan, which the whole thing with Han, where Han's like, "Okay, what do you work?" And he's like, "Sanitation." And he's like, "Well, what are we doing?" He's like, "I don't know. I just came here to rescue Rey." He, he doesn't care about the overall picture. And then at the end of this movie, he's still just trying to save Rey, who, who's his only friend. He thinks like at this stage, kind of thing, basically. Uh, and then he gets knocked the fuck out, and then he wakes up on a ship. And he still tries to escape, and then Rose shows up, and is like, "What are you doing?" Like it's it's all very continuous. That's fair of him. Yeah, I don't know why I always get, and I even still at the end of watching this, maybe I need to just pay more attention to it. I still get the feeling at the end of this that he is a lot more um, de- determined by the end of this movie. Like he's a no. lot more. But he, he, yeah. he just wants to save Ray. Like he's just looking out for his friends. He's not looking out for the overall bigger picture. But yeah, well, I think we'll discuss Finn's thing in the Last Jedi because I, I think I have different thoughts about the the ending, which we can talk about. Um, where I remember opening midnight midnight s- screening where the Falcon showed up, as Ray said, "Garbage will have to do." Probably got the biggest cheer of the whole night. Um, does anyone remember what the biggest cheer they think they the, in their cinema for the Force, Force Awakens? Um. It was either the Millennium Falcon or Han showing up for the first time. I and think the Falcon got more cheers because we've seen the Han moment in yes. Yes. trailers. Yes. Yeah. Um, one of my five things of this movie was having all the different accents expanded the Star Wars universe because I, until this movie, you got to it's like Star Wars was just very like American sounding, or I guess like didn't have many variations of different accents or accents or whatever and then this one it's like they've literally got ray just doing like uh doing like a normal accent which is british obviously semi uh, british um and then you've got finn who's actually british doing an american accent i, well, wish, actor, they kept, john I wish john boyega could have kept his all right bob like he's yeah. just <laughs> his normal <laughs> from me in the fucking thing. yeah but he, yeah. Does, he does a pretty good like he does do the American accent pretty, pretty good, he I'd does. say. Like he, he pulls it off. Uh, and then and, you know you've got all the like on the on hard ship you get all the different accents showing up, the Scottish and all this sort of stuff. So I I, I, I think that makes sense because it's like in the original movies, it's like all these different people and whatever else. And everyone, no one has accents. Like <laughs> I just found it weird. Um, Raftar scene is still just Han fan service and really the only scene that I don't care for in the movie. This was the one scene where it came on and all this stuff was happening and I was just like, it's happening on Twitter. You know, like <laughs> it's, this, it's, this is the Twitter scene. In the movie. It's kind of hot garbage. Like, 
Like, really. Like, I enjoyed watching it the first time, but I wish there had just been more of Han interacting with the gangs and the mercenaries more than Han interacting and running away from and dealing with the Rathtars. It was just... The only reason the scene exists is just like, well, better give Han a Han scene, you know, like a Han being Han and talking talking shit to people and whatever well, else. You've got to you explain know. what he's been doing this entire time between... Yeah, but you uh, do need the CGI Rathtars. You know, I, I could get rid of this and I could get a uh, political scene with no, Leia. No, this <laughs> is more fun. This has got the kids more excited. This is a better choice. <laughs> You've got your boy, Iqua... You go us in the film. Yeah, I could, yeah, I got my yeah. boys over there, but still, they don't. Do I mean, much. they could have fought the <laughs> rat. Yeah, down. like they, do a little bit of. I remember getting <laughs> a couple of moves I when and they then got get cast. Eaten. When I read that that was going to be in this movie in Empire Magazine, I think um, late two thousand or no, early two thousand fifteen, fourteen, whenever the fuck it was, and I was like, "Holy shit, my boys are going to be in this movie!" And then watching it, they show up. I'm like, "Here we go, here we go." Some sick eaten fucking rat martial rat. arts are about to happen. Nah. <laughs> Nothing. No. Have they been explored yet? Has have they done expanded universe stuff on them yet? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, that's what Ryan Johnson's <laughs> trilogy is going to no. be. Yeah. What? Well, maybe. Uh, next thing I write down was Snoke says if the last Jedi is allowed to return, the Jedi will rise with him. So if Ash is allowed to get some crazy mumbo jumbo about possibly George Lucas being cast by reading between the lines, I'm allowed to chuck out my. <laughs> Snoke uh, reading between the lines the last Jedi is allowed to return but the Jedi will rise off the Skywalker does he say Skywalker at any point well, yeah it does if okay, Skywalker then. is allowed to turn the last Jedi okay yeah. um I don't work man I just thought it was funny as I was listening to it uh I buy. I I like. Uh, I just wrote down this part because I loved it. Where Ray and Han are trying to take off, and then they can't start the hi- hyperdrive and stuff. And then Ray rips out that piece and it goes. I bypass the compressor because he just looks so happy with herself. And then, like Han's just like look of the f- okay. But it's like I just like how she's like I bypass the compressor. I'm like girl, you just ripped the part out. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't bypass shit. You just tore it. Hans, Hans kind of like, did you just do that to the Falcon? Did you yeah. just fucking <laughs> just rip shit out of Falcon? <laughs> uh, Ray lightsaber scene. Uh, the Ray lightsaber scene still has me searching for clues. Um, it, it, it's like I'm, I'm pretty sure at this stage we can say safely that if there was anything left to find here, the internet sloops would have found it by now. But it's still just like so much happening and crazy mumbo jumbo shots and Luke and yep. voices and everything. It's like I'm sitting there with headphones. I'm like, is there any? Am I gonna? Am I, I'm gonna spot some clues. No, there's, yep. like, there's no clues. She's a clone of Obi Wan. I mean, maybe. Obi-Wan is the last voice you hear in the thing. No, Yoda is actually. Obi-Wan's the second last voice you hear. Ray. Ray? Clone cross of Obi-Wan and Yoda. Maybe. These are your first steps. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if any they'll come back to that. I expect another scene like that in Return for uh, Rise fully. Another kind of full Yeah, I mean, if they thing, go to the Emperor's place, I mean, that makes sense. If yeah. you touch something and get. Touch something? Because it, it, it's definitely like, okay, so she, she has the, like, she's powerful, obviously. And then she touches the thing and she sees visions of the past where the lightsaber was. Because the first thing that she sees when she goes into the Force vision is uh, Hoth, uh, where obviously the lightsaber fell. But then the last thing she the last thing she sees is Kylie coming after her in the forest. So she sees the future as well. Mm. So it's like past and future stuff happening. Uh, General Hux's Nazi scene is fantastic. I still love it so much. How do you well, burst a high vessel? The power of the first order. He <laughs> must have like broken something in his face doing that. His face looks like it is about to explode, and I fucking <laughs> love how I, I love how much Domino um, Gleason goes ham on this because just the part where he says, "I will pow!" <laughs> his face looks like a fucking tomato ready to just explode. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, so good. I remember the first time watching it, I was like, holy shit, they're really taking the Nazi analogy of this movie to like full fucking force here. But, you know, because they got all the stormtroopers laying down, fucking turn army. And it's like, big fucking might as well Nazi salute off into the distance here. It's like, dude's crass. Love it though. Great scene. Love it. Uh, Bl- Black Squad's entrance is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I think I said this last time we talked about it as well. But yeah, one of my favorite scenes is definitely when 
they, all, they the resistance shows up to rescue them on uh Takonda from uh Maz's tower thing castle yeah. uh just when they come in and all the x-wings like flying across the water it's so cool and then mm. the, the, talking and then that, that one scene where poe's like pew, 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 taking them all out and just how just finn runs across like, that's one hell of a pilot <laughs> <laughs> i love that scene it's great that was the moment where it's like poe dameron what a guy what a guy this yeah. guy is um Okay, I, I this is actually something new. I never could actually figure it out and hear it until watching it this time. I could actually, I could actually hear Daniel Craig inside of that stormtrooper that comes in and she yeah. um, Jedi mind tricks to let her go from uh, the torture device thing this time because we now know that's actually Daniel Craig, and I, I've known that before, but I've never actually been able to pick it up. Whereas this time watching it, I was like, "Oh yeah, that is Daniel like Craig. Him. I can hear it. <laughs> I can actually tell that's that's him now this time." Yeah. Um, do you remember where he was when Han Solo yelled out, Ben, a life changing moment. That was the In most the quiet. Well, yeah, it's, but I always remember it but simply because the cinema, uh, my movie theater had been like, you know, not like loud, but you know, it's like there was cheers and stuff, you know, like oh, all this sort of stuff happening throughout the entire movie. And when it got to this point, I just remember like, cause the whole movie goes quiet and then you just hear me like, yeah, Ben. And I remember just like the entire cinema just like, like, I'm pretty sure that my entire cinema just like took a deep breath at the same time. I was like, <gasps> I, d- I don't think anyone breathed until after he was dead. It was like, <gasps> ah! <laughs> well, know, I, think, like it was- I think it just, it, it, even just in that one word that he, the character itself just drops all of his chagrin, all of his smart ass, his arrogance, his cockiness. And it just feels raw. Like, it just feels like raw emotion of just wanting to... It's a parent yelling out to his kid, literally. It's just like, yeah. Like, mm. you can tell just that one word. Like, he, he wants to save his kid. Like, yeah, it's... It's it's uh, really it's really full on and quite intense, yeah. actually. Mm. Yeah, well, the, the next thing I wrote down was I've watched this movie so many times and here I am still tearing up as... Uh, as he kills Han and Leia, the scene, like you see that shot of Leia falling. It's just back. done was, perfectly. Like the build it up is, to like it. with all the, the light and how long they take with it and everything that's happening. Yeah. I still can't believe it. I've seen, seen this movie so many times. I was sitting there last night just like, I know what happens though. I've seen it a lot. <laughs> now I want to go on I'm the internet and look, like, look up React videos of people watching that. Like, do you know how people do that? Do, how do they do it in the thing? cinema? No, they they always are like, this is my second time watching it, and you're like, oh, that's uh, okay, funny. that's so boring. That's, no, yeah. little kids. Um, I want to watch little kids. That's <laughs> far out. Um, I've always wanted there to be more meaning to that scene. Like, I think when it originally happened, I I was looking so deeply into the lines between the two of them, and I know part of me was always desperately wanting. Kylo to be a double agent, like to be good, but then work like just to be trying to get yes. to the dark side. Yeah, and I'm like, you can read between the lines, and it's just it, it is. He's like, I need your help. I know what I have to. He's fighting the light side. Is what is is yeah. literally what he's saying. He's like, I, I I can't. I feel the pull again. He's not saying the pull to the dark side. He's saying the pull to the light side. Yeah, and that's why he's getting upset. And he's like, I need. I know what I need to do, which is to kill his father. But I don't know if I could do it. Can you help me? And then Han's like, yes. Um, I still like to believe that Han knew that he was, like, there was a pretty high chance of him dying and yeah. him him just doing it and possibly thinking, like, well, Looked maybe pretty if he kills me, to like, me. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, you probably do, even if you think it might come. You'll probably still look pretty surprised if he gets you, stabbed. You still him. have the thoughts of, oh, fuck, I got stabbed. Yeah. Because he doesn't look angry Is it technically like his last being moment. stabbed? Is that the mm. correct term? Yeah, I, yeah, I think stabbed's the right term. Impaled. It's, yeah, no, stabbed. I don't know. <laughs> Ignited. I don't know. <laughs> Shot through. Laser striked. I don't know. I just uh, distinctly yeah. remember you saying last time we did this, um, that this was the moment where you were off Kylo Ren. Like, there's no turning back for him. Are you still of that opinion? No, because of what they've done since. I think I think coming uh, definitely going into the Last Jedi, I was very much like he's unredeemable, and I thought they were trying to make him unredeemable. But then watching the Last Jedi, they done so much to try and 
make you open up to the idea of him being redeemable and you know twisted to a, uh, and Ben Demption one was <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I think that's just a testament the last the last Jedi definitely pu- pulled me back over to being open to to that idea. Definitely coming into The Last Jedi, I wasn't open because this whole movie, they try and make him as evil as old fuck. You know, it's like he is the bad guy. He's unredeemable. Um, and then everything they do in The Last Jedi between him and Ray and like um, him even going through the stuff, like how hard it is. You see him struggling again with Leia. Like they definitely show that he still has pulls to the light side in The Last Jedi. And I feel like if if they went into The Last Jedi and they didn't do any of that, no, like that's it. He's fully dark side now. He's one last moment of like, any good left in him was when he did the 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 part killing Han, blah 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 blah. But then I guess it's also like when you think more about it, it's like all the evil things that Vader ever done, and it's like I it, 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 I think for Star Wars universe, you can't think about redeemable characters and irredeemable characters in realistic ways because obviously people can do fucked up things in the real world, and it's like they're irredeemable. However, in Star Wars universe, to to be able to enjoy the Star Wars world, you've got to be have characters that do a lot of fucked up shit and they've still got to be able to be redeemable because that's just the way the universe works. Because if that's not the way it works, then the whole thing with Anakin and Vader doesn't work. You know? Because if you get to the return, if you get to return of the Jedi and you don't believe in that last moment where Vader, like if, if you feel nothing in that moment where Vader takes off his helmet and like sees Luke and all that sort of stuff, if you're still like, fuck you, you evil prick, you know, but you don't because you you buy into like that whole father son dynamic. So Star Wars doesn't work the same way the real world does when it comes to redeemable characters. I don't think. Um, but uh, where was I? Uh, coming from old other movies, you really appreciate how good the lightsabers look in this forest scene here. And I know we've talked about the lightsabers in this like every other time, but I, I definitely feel like it just shows how much better they look when you've watched old other movies in like the lead up to this one, yeah. and then you get to just this the lighting. And, like, yeah, the lighting on the snow and the tree, like how they look so eyes. much better. Yeah, like well, yeah, the, the that, reflections yeah, in their yeah. eyes is like fucking top notch. Fucking top notch. Fucking top. Fucking, fucking top notch. notch. <laughs> Just fucking beautiful. <laughs> beautiful the lightsabers, mate. Fucking Especially beautiful. when you consider that uh, Kylo Ren's lightsaber is like that flickering. It's not like a solid. It, yeah, thing. it's you broken. Can still, so, how do you replicate that? I don't know. Like in a reflection, that's. Crazy special effects. Them um, ILM peoples, they're doing good work. They certainly are. I got I, I get choked up when Ray pulls a uh, saber to her, and honestly, I feel like if you feel nothing uh, for this scene, then I'm sorry. And I think this is one important thing for like if people you care don't about feel the scene. nothing, they feel damn. That's a Mary Sue moment. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. So it's like there's even two sides to this. I like people are still on about this scene, and um, as much as he may not think he's doing it on purpose, but Mark Hamill going out and talking about how even when he was reading the script, he was like, "Oh, here I come! Like I'm going to be the one that has the the saber here." But it's like that moment, especially as we head into the last movie now, I think is so powerful for Ray as a character, and that moment is super important for this trilogy. Because this trilogy is about new characters, and she is the leader of the new characters. She is the the, the the star, and this scene is the moment for her. You know, like it's super emotional, and I, I'm watching it now with uh, knowing what happens and knowing where we're going, and I'm just like, th- I really feel something watching this 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 scene. Um, so I, I just I definitely feel like if you're one of those people that still watches this and you're like, fuck, I wish that was Luke, or fuck, what a Mary Sue, how did how did she know how to do that? All this sort of stuff. It's like, man. Just stop watching the fucking movies. I mean, <laughs> at this point, I I can't think. Why would Luke show up at that moment? That would be just stupidest, most fans ever see thing that they could yeah. possibly do. Yeah, it it would Especially be ridiculous. for a character that's been you know hidden and lost for so long. How would he? Like, yeah, it just yeah, it's weird. I mean, you'd if have you to completely get- do the redo the story to justify that moment. Yeah, well, it's like if you don't get if Luke comes in, it's like okay, well, where's Ray's moment? <laughs> yeah, is this movie is this new trilogy still about Luke, or is this new trilogy about the new characters? And the new trilogy is about new characters, like not Luke. So uh, anyway, I I love it. I yeah, watching it, I was just like, well, this is this is a really powerful scene. I I, I really really like it. Uh, the big question is if Ray would have killed Kylo Ren if she had the chance or not. I feel in that final scene 
Um, especially, I, I think I was thinking about it more this time because obviously we've had like the Dark Ray stuff in the teaser and um, it seems like the final movie is going to play with her being like pulled to the dark side a bit and this, this sort of thing. I definitely feel like in that final scene where she's like standing over Kylo, she looks pissed, right? She looks angry. She's definitely like fired up. And you got, it just makes me wonder if, if that if the planet had started breaking apart, it's like, would she have just struck him down and killed him right there and then? I think so, 100%. I think so too. I Maybe think she, she would have She it. got a taste for blood during, <laughs> on, on Maz Kanata's planet. Lena I when just she think fires she, that blaster for the first time. Yeah. I just think she is full of raw emotion. Like, she's... It's part of the reason why, you know, back in the prequel trilogy where they say Anakin's too old to start training because he's already um, like developed emotions and everything and he hasn't been ta- taught. Ray's much older and she's learning about the Force and she's, you know, she's just pure, uncontrolled emotion at the moment. So I think she definitely would have taken, given into the anger and, and hit him and killed him there. Yeah, it's, it's it's just really one of those like makes you you think and could be important coming into the last movie, I guess. Um, the next thing I write nope, down is they nope, should. No, 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 I'm not letting you say this. I've read <laughs> yeah. this line about two minutes ago. I I'm mean, not, I refuse. I don't think he's wrong. I think I think it's the right. <laughs> the thing I write down just a is small... they should digi- they should digitally update this movie so there's porgs in the final scene. <laughs> I'm not asking for fan service stuff. I'm literally like, there are fucking porgs on that island. They're in The Last Jedi. Yeah, you don't Fix have to like, do a big, massive porg in the co- sitting in the corner of the scene. <laughs> just the background, there's like porgs flying or floating around. It would just it's add just more so consistency know. to The Last Jedi. They were hidden. They were scurred. They were like, what's this ship thing flying down? We're going to hide for a second. Uh, yeah, I'm hide. pretty sure the op- that's the opposite of porgs. Yeah, porgs I'm pretty sure they climb and hide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're very curious creatures. Uh, and the last thing I wrote down is, I know this is more a Last Jedi thing, but why do people still blame Ryan Johnson for Luke when JJ put him on the fucking island? <laughs> well, Ryan could have been like, oh, Luke takes his lightsaber and then comes straight on the Falcon and they go in front of him. I, I know, but it's like, everyone blames Ryan Johnson for The Last Jedi and like, oh, he ruined Luke and stuff. But it's like, JJ is the one who has the movie that says, Luke has run away. Luke is hiding on the island. Uh, Kylo runs around where the fuck's Luke you know the one who put made Luke I'm perfect by the way I'm saying this as someone who's perfectly okay with Luke's storyline and I actually like what they do with it because I think it's actually really interesting but for the people who complain it's like JJ did it if you, really if there's anyone to blame I think it's JJ just saying not Ryan Johnson Ryan Johnson yeah. dealt with the cards he was dealt you know like he, he got he got handed the deck and he was like okay here's what I'll do he didn't put him on the island uh, and finally, of course, yeah, like let's get last into thoughts. It. Okay, yeah, I want Maz Kanata to come back. I think she's fun, and I just want her and like Chewie to have a scene together on screen. Well, I don't know how much this will mean towards the the uh, the the final movie, but in the in the scene I just read in uh, Resistance Reborn, I guess slight spoilers for that book, but there's a scene with her in Res- Resistance Reborn where she says she wants nothing to do with it. She says that, Sorry. but yeah, she, she could she could turn around because this book's literally this book takes place literally straight after last uh, last Jedi. It's like okay, credits, and here's this book. So th- this is what's yeah, happening. Well, she's still that. recovering from her, her nice bar cafe. Yeah, well, being destroyed. Uh, Rise of Skywalker is a year later, so maybe she changes her mind. But according to that book, she wants something to do with it. Yeah, any other last also. Books? Band is much better than what we got in some of the other. It's not quite the uh, is cantina it scene. Palace. Is it it's better, Palace? way better than that. It's better than Jabba's Palace. Also, Chewie is the unsung hero of this movie. He is. Because as soon as Han dies, he's like, well, fuck you, bang. <laughs> bang. And I'm going to blow this, this motherfucker that I've up. Seen <laughs> ro- from birth to now that I, I semi-raised probably. <laughs> Let me yeah. just shoot you to hell. But just, yeah, all the comedic moments of him being uh, talked to about his injuries and how he's so brave. Yeah. That was funny. Oh, that's real brave of you. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that it? So, yeah. Kieran, any last thoughts? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I think it's been pretty covered. Right. Ash, let's get into it. 
Um, yep. I, well, I will ask for your position of the Force Awakens in where do you think you're going to rank it? No, not, not where do you think. Just tell me where you're going <laughs> to rank it. I think I'm going to put it in at number four. Number four. Ooh. So you're gonna move. You're gonna move Empire up. Yep. And Rogue One up. Yep. And then this will be your current third. Yep. All right. Karen. Uh, put it as number five for me, please. Number five. So you would move Jedi up, Rogue One up, Empire up, and then this would slip in at your number four. Then. Number five. Five. Sorry. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to move Return the Jedi up. I'm going to move Rogue One up. I'm going to move Revenge of the Sith up. <laughs> I'm going to move Empire up, and I'm going to put it at six. So, so we're all in agreement. Our- it did do a New Hope better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it, it did. That is the, the official <laughs> last word on this. Um, so our rankings now are Kieran, Attack of the Clones, A Phantom Manor, Solo, A New Hope, Revenge of the Sith, Force Awakens, Empire, Rogue One, Return of the Jedi. Ash's rankings are Attack of the Clones, The Phantom Menace, A New Hope, Revenge of the Sith, Solo, Jedi, Force Awakens, Rogue One, Empire. My rankings are Attack of the Clones, Solo, Phantom Menace, New Hope, Force Awakens, Empire Strikes Back, Revenge of the Sith, Rogue One, Return of the Jedi. And that leaves us with one spot left currently for where we're going to put um, The Last Jedi. And then I will, we can lock that in as our official, this is our rankings. And then Rise of Skywalker comes in and we're going to chuck that in somewhere and be very much like, this will probably change a week from now, but nonetheless, we'll do it for the the shits anyway so, but we're only one movie away from like a good solid here yes. it is tweet this out get the hate mail in do what you need to do everyone that's it for this week's episode of Old Grand Explosion next week we'll be watching The Last Jedi of course so make sure you watch the movie before then please share this show on social media and tag at Explosion Pod if you're enjoying it tell your friends rate on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser Old Grand Explosion is a Darth production of ExplosionHabit.com, which is where you can also find what you want to watch, our fortnightly movie and TV podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at VivaLadil, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L. You can follow Ash on Twitter at Ashley Hobley, A-S-H-L-E-Y-H-A-B-L-E-Y. You can follow Kieran on Twitter at Ya Boy Ringo. May the force be with you, always. <laughs>